Hello, it's Alden, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to take an image texture and turn it into a cyberpunk sci-fi city. I've been making a cyberpunk city for my sci-fi film, The Robosexual, and I use these techniques to make shots like this and this. I'm gonna use this image texture from textures.com. Um, you can download this with your free points that you get every day. I have some premium ones, but um, you can download that and follow along. So the first thing we are going to do is add an image as planes. Scale it up. Um, and the first thing we're gonna do is um, tab into edit mode. We're gonna use our loop cut tool and we're just going to cut out all of the window panes here. So let's start with the outside. And then now let's get the inside panes as well. Some of these maybe won't line up super perfectly, but that's okay. And um, let's go in, let's also cut out this thing. Okay, so now let's take, um, I'm gonna select surfaces, or faces rather. Choose all of the window area and the panes. And then we're just gonna hit E to extrude it back just a little bit. And then now let's take all of the, oh, this needs another uh, splice there. And now let's take all of the individual window panes themselves. Because that has a little grate on it, we're not gonna select those ones. And then choose here. And then now we're gonna take them, hit E again and extrude it back. You're getting some weird transparency here. Every time Images planes, maybe there's a setting you can change here, but whenever I bring in image as planes, um, where does it, viewport display. Um, it's set to alpha blend, so if we, this is in the texture information here, if we set this to opaque, um, we won't see through the things anymore and we can see the geometry that we just created. Now I'm gonna take some other little bits like this. Let's extrude this forward. Um, these circular things, I'm actually just gonna go in with the knife tool and kind of cut them out roughly. These are just little squares. The knife tool, as you see, like creates all this extra geometry. So it kind of makes loop cutting not work in some places after you've used it. So definitely do the knife tool last. Um, just in case, and we've got a little hole down here we can extrude back. The detail with which you are, you know, cutting this stuff out depends on how close you're gonna see this texture. If you're gonna get a real close up here, I would one, maybe think about paying for some premium credits on textures.com to get a higher res version, and two, I would cut these out way more carefully. But if um, I'm imagining this wall as like this big, you know, massive apartment building, industrial area type of wall, in which case it's gonna be pretty small and we just need some basic geometry to cast shadows. So if we, um, so let's call this, what do we wanna call it? Industrial building. up our shader editor here. And because the building is white and the windows are dark, we can bring the color into roughness. Let's add a color ramp here. Control shift click to preview that one thing. That's if you have Node Wrangler installed, it's just in preferences Node Wrangler. 
Um, and this will show what is black and what is white in the image. So let's bring the whiteness up. We want to get just the windows. And then that's going to be so reflective. Let's you know bring that up a bit. So now, if you can see here, it's kind of got some reflection to it. Now, if we add some lights, let's do like maybe an orange color and like a cyan color. Um, you're seeing the geometry and you're seeing the, um, the shadows created from this geometry and some reflection. So this, if we, uh, make this a little less rough. Well, let's take it all the way to black, for example. Um, you can see in the reflections, um, I have an HDRI already set up there, uh, which here in the world area, if you set the color to environment texture and choose an HDRI from a, HDRI from a company like H, or from a website like HDR Haven, you can come up with some background. And you can see the reflection here in the windows. Um, you can also see the reflection of that light. Um, so you can kind of see what's going on here, but let's turn this down, back down a little bit. And then from here, if you wanted to change some stuff around, so like let's take this window pane, for example, and let's go to the UV editor. Um, a to select it, let's just move it here instead. So it's an actual window. And maybe all these broken windows, we might actually just wanna take the knife tool and cut this stuff out. And if we extrude that way back, there's another broken window somewhere uh, here. Extrude that back. Any other broken windows or was that it? Now if we see some lights shine on that, we should see, yeah, it looked pretty broken. And there we go. We have a, a really simple low poly wall here. And now if we just add an array modifier, we can keep that going. Add another array modifier, set it to what is it? Y is up. And then suddenly we have a big sci-fi building wall here. Um, because of these windows are like a little bit noticeable. So if we wanted to, um, we could have just gotten rid of the broken glass entirely and just um, replaced it with another window here. And we could still do that if we just like hit shift D, X, move it forward a little. Yeah, that'll like fix that if you don't want to see it just because you're going to see that, um, that broken window repeated. If we, you know, take that delete it, we're gonna see that broken window repeated. But if we have it, um, it's gonna disappear. And same with this uh, lower one. There, if we do that, we don't have that repeated broken window, which makes the you know repeating um, texture a little more obvious. Whenever I look at like a lot of references and stuff, I'm inspired by various cyberpunk movies, of course, and games and shows. But I also have this coffee table book called Into the Darkness, and it's about Kowloon Walled City. And I know that there's a lot of cyberpunk based on Kowloon, but that's where I get a lot of inspiration from uh, for creating these types of environments. But then there's also this place, Pont City in South Africa, uh, that has this kind of rounded geometry that I really like. So let's take this wall and curve it so that we can build something like this using this texture. So we're just gonna shift D, um, work on our, new, on our new one here. And so what we're gonna do is take the array modifier that we have 
and set it to array along a curve. So if we add a curve, circle, scale this up to here, let's say, and then go back into our building, add a curve modifier, select that curve, and then we have um, a building here. So we can keep curving around and that'll give us a curved uh, building. The uh, key is to make sure that the origin point for this curve and this building are the same. Because if you move this building, you're gonna start, oops, let me turn it into, you're gonna start kind of creating some problems here. Um, you might find something you like by doing this, uh, but if you want it to go perfectly along that curve, you're gonna to want to keep the origin points the same. So if you wanna move it around, hit add an empty, let's say sphere, maybe scale it up a bit. Take the building, take that curve, click that, hit command P, control P, um, and parent it, and then you can just move the whole thing around. You can scale it, you can rotate it, you can do whatever you'd like, and then you just have control of the um, array stuff in here, and then if you wanted to adjust the, the scale here, which will adjust the um, kind of how curved it is, um, if it's a pretty tight cylinder or a wider one. So if we bring this building back, let's say we duplicate it, hit R, Z, because we're gonna rotate along the Z axis, 45, um, and then move it, hit Shift Z so it doesn't move up and down. But if we line up these corners, we can also get this 45 degree uh, wall here. Another thing we can do to make this thing come alive is add some like randomized lights on this tower. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna import another image as planes. This one is also from textures.com. It is a, just a building with windows of lights. So um, let's go into the, let's, what do we wanna call this? Let's call it building lights. Let's go into our shader editor here. Um, and we are going to take the color, add it to emission, and that's going to make um, that light up. And instead of the alpha coming from alpha, let's take the color and add it to alpha and then add a color ramp. That already is pretty good, but let's add a color ramp, control shift click, and um, just make sure we wanna just keep the light areas and get rid of the darker ones, something like that. So that's gonna give us bright lights, um, some dimish lights, and uh, we're gonna add this to our um, model here by pretty simple, just scale it to something that looks about the size of those windows. And then if you just move it along the Y axis here, so it's popping forward just in front of the windows, but stays behind the window um, panes here. That is gonna create a bunch of randomized lighting. It's super simple, but I found that this looks better, more randomized and more natural than trying to you know, randomly select windows, add lights and stuff like that. Because similar to using the image texture to extrude the building, um, there's just so much extra little detail in the actual image texture here. Uh, and so we can duplicate that. When you duplicate it, if you're seeing some dark areas here, this is just a preview thing. So if I add, you know, a camera. Um, one thing with my cameras, I like to, in the uh, camera properties viewport display, the pass per toot, uh, turn that up just because I always think the shot is wider than it actually is. Let's make it. I'm just gonna do a quick render. You can see that that transparency issue is no longer a problem. It's just something that shows up in the, the viewport here. If you're ever having transparency issues where you think things should be transparent and they're not, if you go into your light paths, just turn up the transparency paths 
um, until you get something that's working. There is another thing we can do here. Uh, this is all kind of like metal, corrugated metal walls. And we can actually add that detail in a couple of ways. So first, if we go to the shader editor, we can take the color, put it into the normal, shift A, add a bump map, take that, put it in height. And this is going to create um, some bumps based on the image texture. This is a bit extreme, especially for the windows, but it's not terrible for the uh, for this, but let's um, let's just set it here. The distance point two. That's kind of like the height that it that it does, and let's see what that looks like. It did a little bit. You can kind of see you can see much more texture here um, on this on the wall where the the light's coming from the side. So that's definitely doing it. Um, this could be enough if you want. But there is, um, I did a few things with some corrugated metal. And so here's another thing that you can do. Just add some loop cuts. I'm gonna try to make them, you know, the same width. But if they're not, that's okay. A little bit of variation is nice because it, um, if everything is too perfect and too exact all the time, that's when your eye starts to recognize a pattern. So if these aren't the perfect, size, that's fine. Hey, future Alden here. I had to start over. Um, so I made all of these loop cuts on a version of the wall that did not use the knife tool because that knife tool created all this extra geometry so the loop cuts didn't go all the way around. So this is me doing that part over. The technique here to create the wave of the corrugated metal is to select all of the edges and then choose select, check or deselect, which will deselect every other one of the edges. Okay, so we're gonna select, check or deselect. Move it along the Y axis. We're gonna do the same thing here. Select, check or deselect. Move along the Y axis. There, and then now with all of that corrugated detail, we're gonna really see it. Um, let's see. Something like this, when we have light coming from the side, um, we're gonna see that detail uh, a lot. Now, all of this other little stuff that sticks out, there are a couple options. We can now go in here and Cut it out with the knife tool again. Um, that's gonna be corrugated now. Um, the other option is, if you don't wanna do that, is what we could do is um, take this whole kind of panel here and just get rid of all of the extra little details. Then take another image as plain's instance of it, cut out just those little bits and we can add them back. So if you, you know, have flat walls, walls at a 45 degree or a cylinder, you can keep adding these together, use different image textures, stack them and reorient them, and you can end up with a cyberpunk city like this, which is the one that I created uh, for my film, The Robosexual. And this uses textures from textures.com. This uses 3D scans that I have, Kitbash, and some other simple geometry in there as well. Hopefully you found this somewhat helpful if you're working on a sci-fi film. If you want access to the project file, let me know. I've been toying with the idea of putting together a Patreon to give you access to all of this, but I'm not sure if anyone actually wants that. So let me know in the comments below.